A lot of the programs we write are concurrent or parallel in nature. Consider, for instance, a web application. It may be receiving requests from hundreds, thousands, perhaps millions of browsers all around the world. And if we want our program to scale, we're going to want to deal with many of these requests concurrently, rather than one at a time. In this diagram, we've got two requests coming in concurrently, and request A has started fractionally before request B. But just because it starts first doesn't mean it's going to finish first. With two parallel threads of execution, the steps could be interleaved in any order. If these two threads, if these two requests, try to modify shared mutable data, this could cause us some problems. If the data structures aren't safe to modify concurrently, if they're not thread safe, we could lose data. To see this, we're going to consider two threads trying to concurrently modify one of Java's array lists. Inside an array list, there's an array. It holds the data, and usually it's got some space left over for new data that comes in. If we try to add data to an array list, and the internal array is full, then the array list will ask for a bigger array, copy all the data across, add the new element, and set that as the new array for the array list. So let's consider two threads concurrently trying to add data to one of these array lists. First of all, request A calls add to add, it, to add C to the array. The array list in the add method spots that the array is full. So it allocates one twice as big, it copies all the data across, and it adds the new element, and it's just ready to set this as being the new array for the array list when, at this most inopportune moment, request B has its go. And it calls the add method to add D. And the add method, sure enough, spots that the array is full. So it allocates one twice as big, it copies all the data across, it adds the new item, to add, uh, adds the new item into the array. And here, now, we've got two threads both of which have arrays that they're just about to set as being the array for the array list. And we don't know what order it's going to happen in, but one of these threads is going to set its array as the array for the array list, and then the other one is going to overwrite it. And we're going to lose data from one of the requests. We lost data because we tried to make concurrent modifications to a data structure that it wasn't safe to modify concurrently. It wasn't thread safe. There's a few solutions to this problem. One of them is to make sure that actually only one thread at a time can modify this data structure, to synchronize the threads one at a time through here, please. But if you've ever been on a busy highway and you've hit some roadworks and the road's been narrowed down to a single lane and you've seen how the traffic builds up, backs up and up and up, trying to get through that one at a time through here, please section, you've probably got a fairly good idea that that's not great for scalability. A second solution is to use data structures where it is safe to modify them concurrently. And sure enough, there are concurrent, lock-free algorithms for modifications to mutable data structures. They can be a bit, quite, a bit complicated, and they're perhaps a, a topic for another time. But the one I want to talk to you about today is about using data structures that can't be changed, immutable data structures. Suppose, for instance, our two threads, instead of adding their data into an array list, they were calling add on an immutable list. Then, when request A called add, it would, instead of modifying the existing list, it would get a new list that has the existing data and the new item that it's trying to add. And request B, when it calls add on this list, it would get a list, a new list, containing the existing data plus the data item that it's trying to add. Neither of them gets the data that each other is trying to add, but neither of them loses their own data, and it's all predictable. It happens regardless of which one goes first or if they go simultaneously, because the list that they're calling add on doesn't change. It's immutable. And so in this way, the immutable data structures are thread safe. Sometimes this behavior of just seeing the existing data plus the change that this request is making is exactly the behavior we're after. So for instance, if we consider our web application with its millions upon millions of requests all happening from all around the world, that looks like quite a complicated story. But if we can just consider it as just this request and the change that it's making, the existing data plus the modifications it's making, and we can consider its val validity without worrying about all the rest of the data. And then at the end, if we've decided, yes, this is good to go with, then we can share the results of that request, perhaps by adding some data into the database. And in doing so, rather than having to deal with the tricky bit, concurrent modification of shared mutable data all the way through the request, we just have to deal with it in one place at the end. And perhaps the database even deals with that for us.